Hi guys. I am just pulling things up now um, because this is a bit interactive. And so I'm just trying to pull up the comments as well. Hello, I am so sorry about that. I was having um, some technical difficulties because why not have some technical difficulties? <laughs> um, my name is Sabrina. I am so excited to be here talking to you about whale species superlatives. So it definitely will be really fun. Again, my name is Sabrina. I'm gonna wait just a few more minutes for other people to join. I know myself, I was a little late. Blame technology on that one. Um, otherwise, we are going to jump into it. Again, my name is Sabrina. I am the program associate here at the Whale and Dolphin Conservation at our North American office. So WDC is a really cool organization if you haven't heard from, about us. Um, we are a nonprofit, a global nonprofit, that are working on trying to protect all whales and dolphins in our shared ocean. So we do that through science, policy, and education and outreach. And this is one of the super fun things I get to do is the education and outreach. <laughs> um, so like I said, I want this to be as interactive as possible. So I'm gonna have you guys be guessing some of the species. So let's get those fingers warmed up. I want you to throw in the comments um, where you're watching from, because that's been one of the most fun things to keep an eye out is as we've been doing this for about 10 weeks now, oh my gosh, 10 weeks, um, people have been watching from all over the world. So we've had, uh, we've had Argentina, we've had Arizona, Massachusetts, Michigan, all sorts of stuff. So I want you to put in the comments where you're watching from. And since today is a really hot day here in Massachusetts, do you like the summer or the winter? So throw it in, let's get those fingers all warmed up. I'm gonna pull up the comments as well. Um, so I can see if I were to comment, my name's Sabrina and I like the winter. I don't like the summer, um, it's way too hot for me. I'm a, I'm a snowbird, a snowbird that likes to stay in the snow. <laughs> um, so we have some people from Massachusetts, awesome. Welcome Allie. Um, let's jump into it though. So we're going to be talking about cetaceans, which is the big fancy word for whales and dolphins. And I just want to give some background information. Um, so there are 88 living species of cetaceans that are broken into two different categories. So I'll be referencing them throughout. We have baleen whales. So there are 14 different species of baleen whales. Um, and basically they're named for baleen whales because they have a structure called baleen and it's just how they eat. The baleen works as a filter, and I talked about it um, in the first week of quarantine. So you definitely should go check out if you wanna learn more about baleen, because I talk all about it. But the baleen whales help to filter their food, the water goes out, the food stays stuck inside, and then whales such as humpbacks, blue whales, right whales are able to eat. Now on the flip side of baleen whales, there's also tooth whales. So there are 74 species of tooth whales. And that's kind of, it gets a little hairy because there's like pygmy dwarfs and like sperm whale, all sorts of stuff. Um, tooth whales have teeth, as you can imagine. And they use that teeth to catch their food, but they also use something called echolocation. And I know we've talked about it in a previous uh, Facebook live stream. So I want to keep it pretty simplistic. But like I said, there are many different species of tooth whales and we'll be talking about some of them today. So in the spirit of graduations um, and the Olympics, um, lots of stuff have unfortunately been a little poopy lately. Um, but the one thing that comes to mind is superlatives. Um, based on, if you don't know what a superlative is, is that based on Merriam-Webster's dictionary, it's the highest quality or degree. So basically, if you're saying some of the superlatives that maybe you guys got when you were in high school are, um, that most athletic or class clown, tallest, prettiest eyes, or like most likely to become president. And I'm not necessarily here to anthropomorphize. I can never say that word, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm not here to necessarily give those qualities to these whales. Um, instead, I, I just want to give them some records, like some serious record breakers. Um, because when it comes to whale species, there are a lot of record breakers when it comes to the animal kingdom. So let's dive into it. Like I said, I want this to be interactive. So I'm keeping an eye out on the comments. It looks like, oh, we have some Florida people. 
some Ontario, ooh, colder weather. <laughs> um, but I want you guys to comment. So the biggest whale species, I'll give you four hints, four or five hints as we go along. The biggest animal in the world, so this species is, this whale reaches lengths of over 100 feet or 30 meters. That's about the length of a professional basketball court or two school buses. I am the biggest animal to ever have lived, bigger than dinosaurs. Oh, I see some people got it already. And it's a baleen whale, so it has that structure. And start you guys out pretty simple. This is an easy one because it's a blue whale. The blue whales get the award for being the, the biggest truly. Um, and it helps that they, these blue whales are swimming in salt water because the salt and the water really helps to suspend them a lot. Because as you can imagine, a big animal means just big in general, very heavy, lots of gravity. So next up, the smallest. See if you guys can jump into this one. So this is the smallest whale species. They only reach lengths of about five feet, 100 point, or 100, oh, I'm so sorry, 1.5 meters, which if you think about it, I'm definitely more than five feet. So this whale is shorter than I am. This is one of my favorite hints. My name is Spanish for small cow. We have any Spanish speakers? Maybe you might know this. And I'm a tooth whale. Additionally, I do wanna note that this whale is critically endangered. Um, they estimate there's less than 20 of them left, unfortunately. And this whale is the vaquita. They get the award for being the smallest whale. So these guys hang out in the Gulf of Mexico. They definitely like that warmer water. And unfortunately, they are kind of stuck when it comes to um, physically getting stuck in fishing nets and stuff. A lot of problems arise from that. So a lot of organizations, are, ourselves included, are working to help protect one of the smallest whale species. So we have two kind of harder ones. Let's start to get into some more fun ones. So the fastest. I am the second largest whale species in the world. So I'll give you a hint now that we know what the largest whale is. And this, do, this whale is all about the need for speed. They cruise at speeds of 23 miles an hour. That's like cruising, but they can sprint at 34 miles an hour. So next time you're in a car, check out and see how fast you're actually going if you're going 34 miles an hour. You'd be surprised, it's actually pretty fast. Because of my speed, this whale species is called or nicknamed the Greyhound of the Sea. And they're a baleen whale. I see some of you guys get it already. <laughs> and yes, it is a fin whale, otherwise known as a finback whale. But I do want to note that they get the fastest whale species but another species called the say whale, it looks a little weird, it's pronounced say whale, um, are a close second as well. So those guys can reach pretty much the same speeds. Um, they are a bit smaller than a fin whale. And when they dive, they don't necessarily arch their back like fin whales do, they just kind of sink. So they're like submarines, really fast submarines. <laughs> okay, we have the loudest whale. I don't sing but I do make a sound and it is the loudest sound in the animal kingdom. Okay, so that could give you a little hint. See so you guys are rocking it so far with the comments. The clicks that I make reach volumes of 235 decibels. That's louder than a rock concert or a jet engine. Ah. As you can imagine, most people working on jet engines or rock concerts usually have earphones in and that's because, or um, headphones, to block the sound because 235 decibels can actually rupture a human ear. Since I'm so loud, I can communicate with my friends that are 37 miles away. Talk about some good service. And it's a tooth whale. Do you think you guys know? Ah, you know, yes, the sperm whale. Yeah, so the sperm whales are known for being the loudest whale. When they make those clicks that can, it, travels very far and wide and can be clearly heard from quite a distance. So we talked about the loudest whale, but let's talk about the best vocalist. Now we're talking front in the choir, ready to do the, I'm blanking, what do you call the solo, the solo. <laughs> um, now the males are known to be the avid singers, so it's a male soloist, 
adapting their song with the environment and who they are with. Scientists think, but don't know for certain, that I sing both to attract mates, but to also figure out the environment I'm in. Interesting, okay. Think, oh, oh, I got some people who might know. I am a baleen whale, you got that one. And my songs can be heard from over 1,500 miles away. That's pretty much the distance from Maine to Florida, if you guys are from the United States. It's quite a distance. And the answer is the humpback whale. Yeah, so humpback whales are definitely the best singers when it comes to whale species. Some of you guys may even heard some of the recordings of whale songs as they are kind of eerie, but absolutely amazing to think that an animal is creating those sounds. So you guys are doing awesome to get the word. We only have a few more left. Um, now we're talking about closest family ties. So this is person not necessarily most likely to be a homebody, but like hangs out with their parents at night, which like not a bad thing. My family is very close and I will live with my mother in our pod for my whole life. Sometimes my pod can contain four different generations. So we're talking kid, mother, grandmother, great grandmother, all in one grouping. Our pods tend to stick to the cultural norms of where to live, what to eat, and more. So they're very focused. Nothing wrong with that. The eldest female is the one in charge, and they tell the group where and when to feed. And I'm a tooth whale. And I see some of you guys got it. Yeah. So this is the orca. And there's many different ecotypes or kind of, if you will, like types of orcas. Um, but in general, orcas are the ones that hang out with their family. Um, and that's pretty special about them. They get the award for closest family ties. Now we're diving into the best gymnast here. What do you guys think? I'm best known for my aerial displays. Okay. I can complete several full body rotations, otherwise known as barrel rolls, they're called, during mid-flight before landing on the surface, which is an incredible feat when you think about it. I can leap up to 14 times in a row, and a single spinning leap will include as many as four body revolutions. And that's a lot of energy that this animal is using. They're going against gravity to lift out of the water. And I'm a tooth whale. So if you guys were thinking humpback, close. Humpbacks are very, very acrobatic. But this is a spinner dolphin. Looks like, sorry, killing it, sorry, there you go. Yeah, so spinner dolphins are getting the award for the best gymnast, but I do wanna note that dusky and striped dolphins are two other species of dolphins that are very close front runners. All three of them are well known for using their tail to propel themselves up, they're hanging out in their pods, and really just having fun amongst themselves. Biggest heart. So we got, not necessarily the most lovable, but like physically the biggest heart. I think you guys know this one. My heart, when fully grown, can weigh up to a thousand pounds. The heart can be the same size as a full grown male polar bear or a concert grand piano which is incredible. If you've tried moving a concert grand piano or a polar bear, I hope you haven't tried to move a polar bear, but it's pretty heavy. <laughs> so that's the same weight as the heart. The main artery or the aorta it's called, is so large that an average human can crawl through it. And it's a baleen whale. There you go, it's a blue whale. So blue whale's hearts are truly incredible when it comes to physically being the biggest in the animal kingdom. I know the New Bedford Whale Museum um, in New Bedford, Massachusetts had a pretty cool model of a, a whale heart. And there's some, I'm sure, throughout the United States. But I had a friend that crawled right into the artery and you could see that, hey, there's a human in the aorta. <laughs> so we had the biggest heart. Let's try the biggest brain. Not necessarily the smallest or the smartest. So my brain weighs roughly 20 pounds the size of some small dogs, if you will. I have a huge head, which accounts for up to a third of my overall body length, but it's not all the brain that's in the head, okay? My brain is six times bigger than a human brain, and I'm a tooth whale. So if you guys follow social, if you follow us on social media, 
this is the one that we were talking about on social media because it is a sperm whale. Sperm whales' head brains are six times bigger than a human brain. That part really blew my mind. <laughs> Good. Blew my mind. <laughs> um, so they get the award. Now we're going to be finishing up strong. We only got th two more. And this one is the Sky Mile Super User. So the one with the longest migration. Think you guys know who this is? They travel between the cold water feeding grounds and the warm water breeding grounds. That travel can be around 4,000 to 5,000 miles each way. That's, that's some serious sky miles that you put in. Some populations of this species can swim round trip of 7,000 miles where they're going from Antarctica cold waters past the equator down to around Colombia, Panama, and Costa Rica. And it's a baleen whale. Think you guys know who it is? Got some grain whales. This is a humpback whale. Now, I, I okay, this is a bit of a trick <laughs> because yes, humpback whales are known for being one of the, the longest migrations, but there are some gray whales that also have a very, very long migration as well. Um, so there was a, a specific whale that scientists found called Vera. I'm so sorry, I'm just trying to pull up um, the thing because I want to make sure I got it right. But Bavera is known as a female gray whale that had the longest round trip at all. So she went around 14,000 miles in 172 days. So when you say the gray whale, got it right, because technically gray whales and humpbacks. Now, our last one, most likely to live past 100. I live in the icy, cold Arctic waters year round. Scientists think that it could help with this longevity. This whale is slow moving, slow growing, and doesn't reach sexual maturity until around 20 to 25 years old. It takes a pretty chill, if you will. <laughs> Scientists don't know how old I can get. Completely incredible when you think about it. And some analysis say that it can reach around 150 to 200 years old. And it's a baleen whale. I know somebody got it. Yes, it is a bowhead whale. Apologize, you can't really see that there. But yes, so bowhead whales are one of the ones that are known for being the oldest. Um, again, scientists are still trying to figure out when it comes to, that's the most common question I hear is, how old do whales get? And we really don't know. Um, that's one of the really neat parts when it comes to whale research is we're still figuring out so much. So regardless of pretty much any of the species, there's so much variety when it comes to the whale world, um, but they all play a really important role when it comes to combating climate change. And so this is something that WDC is a huge advocate of is that we need whales to survive. We have this, uh, we mentioned this in a couple of live streams ago, but when it comes to whales, they help by pooping. And on our ocean surface, there's these things called phytoplankton. And phytoplankton creates over 50% of the oxygen that we breathe. Phytoplankton is basically like a plant and plant needs water, needs nutrients, and it gets that nutrients from these whales pooping. So as much as, and as fun as it is to say that like bowheads are the oldest or orcas are the ones that like to hang out with their moms the best, um, Regardless of the species, they still are absolutely amazing. Scientists still don't know a lot about them. And they play a very important role in creating oxygen, fighting climate change, and sustaining fish stocks. So I don't know about you, but I like all three of those things a lot. <laughs> I like oxygen, uh, especially on hot days like today. So I am officially done with my presentation, but you guys should stay tuned because we have some really, really fun things coming up in June. June is Orca Action Month in the Pacific Northwest. And normally they have events all month long, but because of COVID, unfortunately, they've had to, to cancel them, but not cancel, they're turning them virtual. So we have some really fun stuff for you guys planned. We have craft nights, we have um, a daily action that you can do at home, um, super simplistic, you don't need to buy anything. We're gonna have pub talks, we're gonna have trivia night, might even do a movie screening. Um, so it'd be really, really fun. Make sure you stay tuned on our social media. So that's Orca Action Month, but we also have the New England Whale Festival, which is an annual festival that WDC puts on. 
And again, unfortunately, we had to turn it virtual this year, but it still will be really, really fun. It kicks off on the 8th, and um, you said definitely stay tuned. We'll be, it'll have fun workshops of um, artists, singers, poets, and a panel at the very end where you guys can come up with questions and ask experts when it comes to whales. Because I'm not really an expert, but I try to be. <laughs> um, so you guys can ask the like super, super expert experts like my boss. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for joining, guys. I hope you had fun. I had a blast as well. If you have any questions, I'll stay on for a few minutes if you want to throw them in the comments. Otherwise, stay cool or stay warm, depending on where you are. And I hope you have a safe and healthy Thursday. Bye.